Well, good day, Miller Family Farm Trust. Today, we're gonna to be looking at what it takes to design and install a multi-pond irrigation system for your farm or homestead, along with ditches for passing uh, water from pond to pond and through the system, and some swales that will feed the whole entire system. So stick around and let's get to it. One of the main reasons to have ponds, lakes, uh, ditches, swales on your uh, farm or homestead is for livestock irrigation and for crop uh, irrigation. So we're gonna look today at how this is put together, how we network ponds together, how we network uh, ditches to transport water from pond to pond, and then how we use irrigation to hydrate our entire farm and the surrounding properties. So this is pond number one in a network of three ponds that pass through this property of about 300 acres. And uh, this pond is connected by ditches. Some people call it swales, but there's the ditch right there that connect pond number one and it flows through to pond number two. You can almost not even see the ditch there, but there is a major ditch that goes out to that lake. And when this lake fills up, when it, when it hits its crest, it flows into this ditch waterway to pond number two, which hydrates that pond um, through its overflow. So let's go down and take a look at pond number two. And we'll also talk about how to fill these ponds because just really flat land takes a long time, sometimes years, to fill these ponds. So we'll, took, we'll take a look at what a watershed is and how we use watersheds effectively to fill our lakes and our water systems on our farms and uh, homesteads. So here we are at lake number one. And what we're looking at is um, how to connect different ponds to other ponds uh, using ditches and swales. And one of the other things we're going to look at is uh, how large a watershed you will need to fill your ponds and irrigation system without overfilling the system. So one of the problems we have is if you use too large a hill or slope to fill your ponds, it will overfill your ponds, and that could be a major problem. It flushes out fish and nutrients and the biology of the actual lake itself. Uh, so we don't want to do that. So, so what is a watershed, and how big should it be compared to your pond size? Well, a watershed is a tract of land that may or may not have creeks, that are, and the land is slightly higher than a, the larger body of water like a pond lying below the watershed. Topography determines where and how water flows. So if you look across the lake over here, you see the topography. We got a high hill, and then it goes probably from about 15 foot all the way down to two or three foot, pitching towards the lake. So topography determines how, uh, where and how water flows. Topography is the arrangement of natural and artificial physical features of an area of land and will show you the elevation of the land as well as including hills, gullies, and pitches. The whole trick to use the land itself to catch your water that will feed your pond and your entire irrigation system. A little trick for maximizing all of your land for pasture or crop usage instead of using it for watershed usage is to position your first pond as high on your property as possible and to use the neighboring property runoff, their watershed, for your own. So if that property over there was my next door neighbors, they have a major runoff coming in to this pond. So generally what we do is we put this pond as high on our property as possible uh, next to our property borderline. And how we determine where to put the pond is where 
where do we have this kind of neighbor that has a runoff coming towards us at a lower point, our pond being a lower point. And the reason we do this is because we want to use all of our land for either holding water, for pastures, for crops, or for orchards and trees. So we don't want to you know, use our land, if we don't have to, for water capture. So, so we can maximize the use of our land by positioning our pond as high as we can elevation-wise on our property that is next to a hill that will fill this pond. So the ideal location would be the highest part of your land which is next to a neighboring property that is slightly higher than your land and that leans towards your proposed uh, pond location so that you can use the neighboring lands to fill your irrigation system. This might not sound too fair <laughs> to some, but it's already happening already anyways. That is the neighbor's land is already higher than your land and is already pushing water onto your property. So you can see here that that big old land is already putting water on our property. So we're, it's not unfair, it's already happening. Their land is already higher than our land and that water coming off that 15 foot hill is already coming down to our property. So it's a perfect place to put a lake just like this system did. They put a lake knowing that that watershed is going to push water to this lake. So in all actuality, you would probably be doing your neighbor a favor because when water is held in a pond or irrigation system, instead of running off to the next door neighbor's property, or worse, causing flash floods and land erosion, it will hydrate all the lands around it and cause lush green growth. Using the neighboring watershed is, is with the knowing that the water will be held in your pond where it will seep into the ground, which affects all surrounding areas with a deeper irrigation that will bring life to the entire region. So do not feel bad that you're using your neighbor's runoff or watershed to fill your irrigation system, as you'll probably be doing him and your lower lying neighbors a huge favor by stopping flash floods and runoffs and to begin to hydrate not just your property, but all surrounding properties. So we talked about topography mapping, and you might want to know, where can I get this topography mapping data from? I thought so. I thought you might want to know that, Miller Family Farm people. Uh, so don't you hate when people use fancy words and methods and don't do all the extra work to give you the details of where to get it and how much it would cost? Here on Miller Family Farm Trust Channel, we do all the work and find the best prices on everything we talked about in our videos. We love creating these videos. I am not sure if you know this or not, but YouTube does not pay us a penny until we reach 1,000 subscribers. Can you believe that? Every video takes about two hours to record, four hours to edit, and it's a lot of work, but it's what we want when we are investing our time researching on YouTube and other video vlogs. So we do the work for you. We love creating these videos, and I'm not sure if you know this or not, but YouTube doesn't pay us a penny until we reach 1,000 subscribers. That's right, we're working for free for YouTube and for our loyal followers. And can you believe that? That every video takes about two hours to record, four hours to edit, one and a half hours to research, and to find the best prices on the web with links to these products. So about a whole day's work to do just for one video and YouTube will not pay us a penny until we reach 1,000 subscribers. So please click subscribe now as it doesn't cost you anything and it helps us unbelievably. Hit the bell icon too after you subscribe to be notified the minute we post more cool videos like this one. Okay, back to our programming. Where were we? Okay, we were talking about topography and where we can find that information. So the easiest way is by going to your county property appraiser website and completing a search of your property by address, owner name, or parcel ID. 
and once you've found your property, there should be a map button somewhere on the property information page. You can click the GIS, GIS map, and then click topography setting. If you have any difficulty, you can simply call your local county property appraiser's office to request help in getting this map. All counties need to know the elevation of every property to determine flood areas, so don't let them tell you they don't have such a map. Or you could simply Google topographic maps, and there are many websites that can help you out too, but your, your county is probably the easiest way. You're welcome, family. Right here is an example of a parcel we are about to install an irrigation system on, and it was downloaded from Marion County Property Appraiser website using the map click button and then clicking topography on the right hand side tab. It's easy to see where the upper pond should be placed and where our lower pond will be placed and where we will install the ditch to connect the two. Once you got your map of your property and the surrounding neighbor's properties, it will become obvious where you want to start your first pond by determining the highest point on your land that has a higher watershed on the neighboring property. The watershed should be about three times the size of your proposed pond. And here's a warning note. Do not use too large a watershed as it will either wash out your new pond, that is that it will fill up with so much water that it will take out your, uh, your walls or your dams around your pond, or cycle the water in the pond too much. That is, it puts in so much fresh water, it flushes out all the ecology, your fish, your minnows, and everything else. There is an ecology that gets established in your pond water. You do not want to wash out 8% of your pond water every time it rains by having an over large watershed. So one acre pond needs three acres of watershed. A five acre pond needs 15 acres of watershed. And so on and so on. This particular, this particular lake is a one acre lake. And so it needs three acres of watershed need high property like the high property over here that is about the size of three acres that pushes water into your one acre pond. So if you're installing a one acre pond your watershed should be three acres. This is where you put lake number one. Second step is to determine the lowest part of your property off of your topographical map and that will be your last pond. And you could put three or four ponds in between. So the, the first pond goes at the highest part on your property that has a watershed. And then step number two is to determine the lowest part of your property to put your last pond. And then you could put two or three ponds in between. We use the lowest part for two reasons. To use gravity to move water from the highest point to the lowest point where water will naturally want to stay anyways. The lowest part of your land will always be the wettest, so why have muddy pastures or crops when you can use the land as a natural placement for your irrigation pond? Let Mother Nature tell you where to place your lowest pond and try to hold the water there as long as possible before it exits your property through a spillway onto your neighbor's property and hence making your property the new watershed for your neighbor if they choose or are in the know. The second reason is you do not want to change the natural flow of water through your property. As the environmental folks sometimes get very upset when we change how water moves through your property. I know, I think it's ridiculous too that the government can tell you how to use your property when you own it, but they do. You will always want to print your topographical map and hand draw or Photoshop your proposed irrigation system for approval at your local zoning department and get an approval letter on letterhead from them. And if the EPA complains, you will, you will have your local zoning letter to fall back on. This is not 100% foolproof, but it's much better than just doing this on your own if you really like dealing with regulators, you can go to your local EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, right after you have first gotten your local zoning approval letter for your pond system. 
That way you could just show them, like, listen, my county said that they're happy with this, they think I'm doing good work, and this is what I'm proposing. And you can get the approval from your EPA then. Do you want a big tip, family? Okay, so here's a big tip for you. There are grants to have irrigation lakes and pond systems on your land for free. <laughs> I thought you might like that. Because it could be expensive putting one lake, but imagine having three or four lakes. So there are grants. There's grants. They give you money to install pond systems and irrigation systems on your land for free. Paid by the federal government. This was recently started by our President Trump. Stay tuned to the end and I will get you those details. Yes. Uh, one other thing. The deepest part of your pond should be 12 to 16 foot minimum. So again, the minimum depth of your pond is 12 to 16 feet. And the reason is, is it holds a lot of oxygen in those areas. And, well, there's lots of reasons, but that's the main reason. The third reason we choose the highest point on your property for pond number one is that we're going to install a simple gravity fed irrigation system to water both livestock and crops. We do not want to use electric pumps because it costs a lot of money for electric for those pumps, not to mention the carbon footprint. And if, if the electric goes out, well, then you could lose livestock and crops. So let's use our brains instead of our wallets. We will install Schedule 40 PVC in the center of the pond where they are building the pond and run it out the bottom of the pond dirt dam. So the walls that go around your pond, we're going to put a pipe right there uh, that goes to the bottom of the pond and then goes out what, you're the lowest point on your pond out the dam or the dirt the dirt wall of your pond. So it will go underneath uh, the walls of your pond and out to the lower part of your property. So again, we start at the highest point and we install our pond. And then on the lower side of that pond, we're going to put in a intake pipe that goes out the bottom of that newly formed dam wall and uh, heading down uh, to the lower parts of your property to use gravity to feed it. We will install schedule 40 piping in the center of the pond when they are building the pond and run it out the bottom of the pond dirt dam that will be built around your pond and pointing towards the lowest part of your property or to where you need water, but not uphill. So the warning is we're not gonna go uphill. So I always recommend letting your pond builder install these PVC pipes as this is the place where your pond can leak out. That is that water always tries to find a way out of your pond, a way to seep into the ground. And one of the easiest ways is to seep around your PVC piping and to follow that underneath your, your dirt dam, the walls of your pond, to a lower part of your property. So it, just like we installed our pipe to go to our lower part of our property, uh, it will also uh, seep out around that pipe and becomes bigger and bigger and it, it can literally leach out your whole entire pond. It just gets bigger and washes out and erodes until your pond's empty. So it's a really good idea to let the pond builder put these pipes in because they know how to do it. In a few minutes, we're going to talk about, if you're going to do it yourself, how to uh, put some protections in so this doesn't happen. And here's another note for you. Your pond builder should have a D7 dozer or larger to minimize the amount of, of hours spent building your pond and hence the cost of your pond. Trust me, D7 or larger or the equivalent to a D7 dozer because there's a lot of different manufacturers and so, uh, but it's gotta be a D7 or larger and this will expedite how long it takes to put your pond in. That's a nice big dozer. And I've hired people that are cheaper, they have smaller dozers, but it triples the number of hours to put that in, hence triples your cost. So ask your pond installer at the time they inspect your property what size their dozer is that they're going to be using to install that and make sure it's a D7 or larger. The pond builder knows how to install the PVC so that it will not leak. Let him do it, as this is an expensive fix afterwards if it's not done properly. 
If you're going to do it yourself, we always start with a large PVC pipe diameter in the pond itself and going to the outside of the pond dam wall. If you are, if you are just installing one watering point for cattle 50 feet from your pond, well, you can get away with a Schedule 40 2-inch PVC pipe. And if you're going 100 acres away, you'll want to have at least a 6-inch PVC pipe in your pond and under your dam wall uh, to provide proper pressure to the other side of your property. Always pour concrete around the inside pond dam wall around your PVC pipe. This isn't 100% effective at stopping leaks, but it sure doesn't hurt and it only costs $3 a bag of concrete. Try to build a cheap 2 inch by 6 inch 2 by 6 framing box. 4 foot by 4 foot to pour your concrete into on the same angle as your pond dam wall. So if there's a, you know, a 30 degree angle, then you need to build your box at that 30 degree angle. You're going to put your PVC through that box in the center and line the frame with black plastic sheeting, six millimeter thick, extending six feet out of the bottom of the frame and taped using Nashaw tape, waterproof tape, or duct tape, and duct tape your PVC to that plastic. So you're creating a, a concrete barrier, then you're creating a plastic barrier underneath that, taped to your PVC and, uh, and wrapped in concrete. So it's not 100%, but it's a lot better than doing nothing and just running your PVC through your dam wall. And by the way, all products that I mentioned in this video, as always, are, are listed below with pricing. So you don't have to go try to find all these products. What a pain. I hate watching YouTube videos that don't tell you what kind of products they use and how much they cost. But we do here on Miller Family Farm Channel. This should go a long way to stopping leaks that try and follow your PVC pipe out of your pond with your water. You could place a couple of these concrete barriers in the dam wall every four to six feet as your paranoia dictates. Or if you want to be a bit on the cheap side, you can use black plastic sheeting with a four by four vertical stake using wood or rebar stakes and tape it to your PVC every four to six feet vertically, straight up and down, not horizontally. And that creates like a, uh, a barrier wall that it'd have to go up or around the, uh, the PVC pipe to find a way out. Uh, or if your dozer operator thinks he can work around them. So when you're putting those in, you have to you know, get a wheelbarrow and dump dirt around them because you're not gonna be able to push around those with a dozer because it's just rebar stuck in the ground vertically with tape zip tied to it and a PVC pipe going through it. So you need to grab your wheelbarrow and start dumping dirt around that barrier until it piles up over that barrier where your, uh, your dozer driver can drive over that because he's gonna be driving over your pond walls constantly for a couple of days, most likely.